In this video, we'll transform our GNOME desktop into a Windows-style setup. If you're switching from Windows, this tutorial will help make your transition to Linux smooth and familiar. Whether you're using Ubuntu, Fedora, or any other GNOME-based distro, you can follow this tutorial. While we won't make it an exact copy of Windows, we'll get very close. We'll set up familiar icons, a start menu, and even give you the option to choose between Windows 10 or 11 layouts. Let's get started. I'm using Manjaro with GNOME 48 for this setup. Here's what we'll need to get started. First, we require two essential applications, GNOME tweaks and extensions. If you're on Ubuntu or any Debian-based system, you can install both by running these simple terminal commands. For other distributions, check the description for installation commands. You might also find these applications in your software center. Now that you've installed both applications, let's begin by opening the Extensions app. Before we proceed, if you're currently using any dock extensions, like Dash to Dock or similar, please disable them first. Ubuntu users, this includes disabling the default Ubuntu dock extension as well. Next, we'll install some essential extensions. The first one we need is Dash to Panel. In my case, it came pre-installed with Manjaro, but you'll likely need to install it manually, as most distributions don't include it by default. To get this extension, we'll visit the GNOME Extensions website. Open your browser and search for GNOME Extensions. The official site is extensions.gnome.org. Once there, search for Dash to Panel in the search bar. You'll see several options. Make sure to select the one by Charles G. 99. Before installing, you can verify compatibility by clicking the drop-down menu next to the download button. This shows which GNOME versions the extension supports. All extensions shown in this video are fully compatible with GNOME 48. Now click the Install button to proceed with the installation. After installation, open your Extensions app and enable the Dash to Panel extension. Note, if this is your first install, it may enable automatically. After enabling the extension, you'll immediately notice the changes. The top panel moves to the bottom and we now have a combined dock panel layout similar to Windows. But we're not done yet. We will change some of its settings to make it look better. Right-click on the panel and select Dash to Panel Settings. From there, you can customize almost every aspect of the panel. First, you can adjust the panel height, drag the slider until you find your preferred size. Next, navigate to the Style tab. Here, we'll modify the application indicator. By default, it displays a full width bar, but I recommend switching to the more subtle dot indicator for a cleaner look. Of course, feel free to experiment with the other style options to match your personal preference. Under Running Indicator, you can change that style. I selected the dot style for both focused and unfocused apps. Now, see the extra space between icons? Let's reduce it. Scroll up to App Margin and move the slider left to make gaps smaller. You can also change icon padding. This makes icons bigger or smaller. Adjust both sliders until your panel looks perfect. Next, we'll install another extension. Go back to extensions.gnome.org, search for Arch Menu, and install the one made by Andrew Z. I am specifying this exact version because some similarly named extensions may not work with the latest GNOME version. Go ahead and install it now. After installation, you'll see this new menu icon on your taskbar. That's our application menu. Now let's customize it to look like the Windows Start menu. Right-click on its icon and open Arc Menu Settings. Inside Arc Menu Settings, head to the Menu tab. You'll see the Menu Layout option where all the different style choices are available. For that Windows look we want, open the Modern Menu Layout section. You've got both Windows 10 and 11 styles right there. This is how the Windows 10 style menu looks. Remember, you can customize it even further. Change the background color, adjust the opacity, modify icon sizes, and more. All these options are right here in the Arc menu settings if you want to fine-tune the appearance later. For now, we are going with Windows 11 style menu. Here's how our Windows 11 menu looks but now we need to center it properly. First, right-click the panel and open Dash to Panel Settings. 
Scroll down and there you see the widget position options. For the taskbar, change from stacked left to monitor center. This moves all icons to the middle. Now apply the same monitor center setting to the left box. This will align the menu button to the center. Now we've got our icon centered, but the application menu still needs adjustment. Right-click the menu icon and open Arc Menu Settings again. Head to the Menu tab, then Menu Visual Appearance. You'll see the Override Menu Location option here. Set this to Monitor Centered. Now, let's see how it looks. Ah, uh, wait. I see the issue. Right now, it's centered on all sides, but we specifically want it bottom centered. Simply change the Override Menu Location setting to Bottom Centered. Perfect! Now it's positioned exactly where we want it. While we're here, let's tweak the height too. In the same Visual Appearance section, you'll find the Menu Height Control. Here, I'm using 620 pixels, but you can adjust this to whatever works best for your setup. Now, we will explore some of its theming options. In the Arch Menu settings, under the Menu tab, you will find the Menu Theme option. Click on it and enable the Override Theme toggle. After enabling it, you'll notice that your menu theme has changed. Here you can adjust several settings like background color, font size, border color, etc. But for now, we are not going to use these. Next up, let's change that menu icon. Right-click the menu and open Arc Menu Settings again. Navigate to the Menu button section. Here you'll find the Custom Menu Icon option. Click Browse. Arc Menu includes lots of built-in icons, but no Windows logos. You'll need to download a Windows icon file separately first. Once downloaded, select Custom and choose your downloaded Windows icon file. Perfect! Now our icon matches. While we're here, you can also adjust the icon size to blend perfectly with your other taskbar icons. Next, we'll download and apply Windows style icons. Open your browser and visit this link. This is the Windows style icon pack that we're going to download. Click on the Files section. Here you'll see several download options. Don't worry, these are just the same icons in different folder colors. For the authentic Windows style look, download the special one, the first one. This gives you the classic yellow folders. If you prefer colored folders instead, you can download those too. I'm going with the blue version for this tutorial. After the download finishes, click this small folder icon to open your downloaded file in your file manager. Right-click the theme archive, choose Extract, and wait until it fully completes. Now open the extracted folder. You'll see two folders inside. Select both and copy them. Next, go to your home folder, press Ctrl plus H on your keyboard. This reveals hidden files and folders. Find the .local folder. Open it, then go into the Share folder. Remember, now your current path should be slash home slash your username slash .local slash share. Here, right-click and create a new folder. Name it exactly Icons. Finally, open your new Icons folder and paste the copied theme folders here. Now let's apply these new icons. First, close your File Explorer and Browser. Open your Tweaks app, then go to Appearance. Here you'll find all theme customization options. For icons, select your newly downloaded Windows icons. Our theme is named Wii 10X, and since I chose blue, I have Wii 10X Blue, both light and dark version. Select the first one if you're using a light theme, choose the dark version if your system is in dark mode. I just selected the dark theme, and now you can see our icons has been changed. 
we've got fresh new folder icons, plus updated system icons for battery, sound, and Wi-Fi. They might look a bit off right now, but we'll fix that. Right-click and open Dash to Panel Settings, then select the Fine Tune option. Look for Tray Font Size at the top. Adjust this until your icons look perfect. I'm setting it to 26 pixels, but your ideal size may vary. Now your icons look perfectly balanced, sharp, and professional. Here's one extra option, totally optional though. In the Style tab, you'll see Animate Hovering App Icons. Turn this on if you want those smooth little animations when your cursor touches the taskbar icons. But you can absolutely skip this if you're going for just the Windows look. Next, let's make the date and time look like Windows. Open the Extensions app and install the Date Menu Formatter extension. You already know how to install the extensions. Once installed, click the three dots and open its settings. Okay, in these settings you've got so many options. First, change that formatter setting to Simple Date Format. Then, just scroll down a bit and you'll see all those special codes for how the date and time can appear. For the windows like date and time, use this format code. Just copy and paste it here. You also get options to align the text to left or right and change the font size as well. You know how in windows the date and time sit all the way to the right next to the system icons? Let's do the same here. Just right click your panel and open dash to panel settings. Scroll down a bit, find the date menu option, and click that little down arrow. Boom, it jumps right over to the correct Windows position. Now let's push that time over to the right side where it belongs. Just open your extensions app, find the date menu formatter settings, and switch the text alignment to right. That's it. Now your clock's sitting pretty just like in Windows. Next, we'll apply the Windows style wallpaper. Here, I've downloaded some wallpapers. You'll find them in the description, or you can use your own. In the Files app, just right-click on the wallpaper image and set it as background. Now that we've changed our wallpaper, but our application menu still doesn't look quite right. Let's fix that. First, right-click on the menu icon and open Arc Menu Settings. Now, go to the Menu tab. Here, you'll see the Menu Theme option. Click on it, then enable the Override Theme toggle. After enabling it, you'll immediately see the changes in the menu. Next, click the Background Color option. Then, click this small plus icon. Now we're going to pick a color from our wallpaper. Click the pencil icon and select a color from your wallpaper. After selecting the color, I recommend making it slightly darker and adding some transparency with this slider. When you're happy with how it looks, Click Select to apply your changes. Now our application menu matches our wallpaper, and we also have that nice transparency effect we added. You can also customize other theme options here, like the hover colors. Just match these to your preference. Now that we're done with theme settings, go back and open the menu visual appearance settings. Here, I recommend setting the icons a little larger. The default small size doesn't look that great. I've already changed some of these settings, which is why some of my icons look bigger and better now. Our top icons still look a bit small though. Making them slightly larger improves their appearance significantly and gives you more of that Windows-like vibe. Change the grid menu item setting to medium square. Now our application menu looks much better, way more like Windows. Next, we'll download the Fluent GTK theme. This will make our desktop look even more like Windows. Once you're on the download page, click the files to see the download options. Here you'll see different color versions. Each color affects your quick settings tiles and some UI elements. So if you want to have these tiles in different color, you can download your preferred color theme. For the classic Windows Blue, download the first one named just Fluent. Want something different? The red, orange, and other variants work too. 
I'm sticking with the default fluent theme for that familiar windows blue look. After downloading the theme, extract the archive and open the extracted folder. Inside you'll find several theme folders. Select them all and copy or cut. Now go to your home directory. If you don't see hidden files, press Ctrl plus H to reveal them. Now navigate to dot local folder, then share. Here, create a new folder named exactly themes, all in lowercase. If theme folder already exists, simply paste your copied folders inside it. Hey. To apply the theme, open your tweak software and go to appearance. Here, you should see the shell option. Wait, you might not see this if you're missing the user themes extension. If it's not there, visit the extension site and download user themes extension. Restart the tweaks app. Now, you'll see the shell option ready to use. Under shell, you'll find your fluent theme. If you're not using dark mode, apply the light variant. Here I am going with the dark theme since I have dark mode enabled. After applying it, you'll notice your quick tiles become more square shaped. Everything gets that perfect Windows like vibe. You will also get a compact version of the Fluent theme. It makes all the panel elements more compact, more compact calendar and notification area. Try both the compact and normal version and pick whichever works best for you. In Windows, you can easily place app shortcuts on the desktop, move folders there, or create new files. But in Linux, especially with GNOME, this isn't possible by default. The good news is, we can fix this with two simple extensions. First, you'll need Add to Desktop. This lets you add any app shortcut to your desktop. Then get Desktop Icons NG, DANG. This one handles files and folders, letting you create new ones or move existing items to the desktop. Once you have both extensions working, you can right-click to create new files or folders directly on your desktop or drag items from your file manager over. For app shortcuts, you can't just drag and drop from the taskbar. Here's how to do it properly. Open your apps grid, right-click on any app you want to add, and select Add to Desktop. Now, when you return to your desktop, there's your new shortcut. You can arrange these icons anywhere you like. Launch apps with a single click, just like you would in Windows. Have you ever been working with text, copied something important, then copied something else? and suddenly realized you lost your first copied text? In Windows, you just press Windows plus V to bring up your clipboard history and get it back. But here in GNOME, normally that text would be gone forever. But guess what? We can fix that too. All you need is a handy extension called Clipboard Indicator. This little tool will give you that same Windows plus V functionality right here in Linux. Once you've got this installed, simply click the new clipboard icon on your panel. And there's your full clipboard history, every text and image you've copied. Now let's set up Windows style keyboard shortcuts. Open system settings and go to keyboard. At the bottom, click view and customize shortcuts. Now go to the launcher section, then click on home folder here. Press Windows plus E on your keyboard. Remember, in GNOME, the Windows key is called the Super Key. Set your shortcut and... Now, when you press Windows plus E, your file explorer pops open just like Windows. You can customize all your favorite Windows shortcuts this way, making Linux work exactly how you want.